morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As we begin our worship this morning, I would like us to please turn into our blue hymnal um, for our call to worship. And it will be taken from uh, a number 4704. And if you do not have a blue hymnal at home and you are joining us in reading the text, and the text will be taken from Isaiah 55, starting from verse 6. The word of the Lord says, Seek God who may be found. Call upon him who is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the sovereign one who will have mercy on them. And to our God who will abundantly pardon. Amen. Please join me as we open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning that as we begin, we bring our minds and our understanding under your control. Lord, it has been extremely difficult lately, even in worshiping through the social media. Lord, we need your understanding. Open the eyes of our hearts as we search and seek you this morning. Lord, may you anoint our lips even as we worship at homes and via the social media. Lord, even help me as I try to present your words this morning that you will anoint the words that will come out of my mouth. Holy Spirit, bring our hearts together. Help our thinking, for you are the beginning and the end. We thank you for the gift that was given to us at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Bless us and be with us as we worship this morning, that we will worship in spirit and in truth. For this is our desire and prayer, for we pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Real quickly for the announcement, you know, our God is a God of humor. Uh, we do have a family named the Corona family. And uh, as everybody is afraid of the coronavirus, the Corona family are celebrating the birth of uh, Paz Mir, who came a couple days ago. She came out uh, at uh, nine pounds, 9.2 pounds. We just pray that the Lord will be with her, especially her mother, uh, Cheryl, as she is recovering from um, the delivery. Pray for wisdom of the Lord upon them as family as they raise this little kid, that she will understand in, she will understand the blessings of the Lord. Secondly, please uh, continue to pray for our brother, Brother Shahril. He just had a, a very major surgery, and we thank the Lord for a successful surgery, even though he is in pain. But we ask that the Lord will continue to heal him, and um, pray for those that have lost their loved ones as a result of this pandemic that is going on right now in our world. Pray for those loved ones that have lost their loved ones. Pray for those that have contracted the virus and are sick, that the Lord will extend his healing hands upon them. Let's also remember to continue to pray for those that are being carried away by the anxiety of this virus. And uh, please pray for those that as a result of this pandemic and the economy, some people have lost their job. And even among our congregation, we have people that have lost their job that the Lord will provide for them. And um, uh, pray for peace among family members. We have a lot of family members. This has been an interesting time of this quarantine where husbands and wives are staying at home. Uh, the LAPD, the Upland PD, uh, going through a high record of calls because there's just a lot of fight among family members. It's been very, very difficult for a lot of family, and it's a trying time. Let us continue to thank the Lord for the continuous work that is happening here at the church. Please, if you don't have to be in the facility, do not come. Uh, the place is all torn up as a result of the flooding that happened. Uh, we're still working. Uh, every part of my body is aching in pain. Uh, we're doing our best uh, to make sure that uh, by the time you get here, 
uh, hopefully in about a week or two or three, as soon as we can, that everything will be ready uh, for us to just go straight into worship. As the Lord blesses you and you are willing to help with the donation of the recovery because of the flooding, it's going to cost us between fifty and sixty thousand dollars. So, uh, if you are giving, uh, you can give through Zelle uh, using our church email address, which is peacechurchupland at gmail, or you can give uh, using your credit card or uh, debit card using Giftly, and it will be on the subscription. So, uh, please look into that. And we appreciate those of you that have uh, text and uh, have sent your gifts. May the Lord bless you as you have given unto his work. And um, he will continue to sustain you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, let us uh, welcome the worship team as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's lift up a shout of praise this morning. For our God is great. He is awesome. So just lift up a shout of praise together this morning.
Father, this morning, we just want to bring all glory and all honor to you, Father, for only you are worthy of all glory, Father. Who is this King of glory that pursues me with his love and haunts me with the cheering of his softly spoken words? a reminder of forgiveness that I need who is this king of glory who offers it to me who is this king of angels the blessed prince of peace revealing things of heaven all its mystery spirits have a longing for his grace in which to stand who is this king of glory son of God and son of man his name is Jesus precious of glory who is this king of glory with strength and majesty and wisdom beyond measure the gracious king of kings the lord of earth and heaven King of glory, he is everything to me. His name is Jesus, precious Jesus, Lord Almighty, King of my heart, King of glory. my heart, King of glory.
Righteousness, oh God, how I need you. As we look into the word of God this morning, the title of my message is How to Pray in a Crisis Time, like this. Before we start, I would like to begin by asking the question, what do you really want in life? What do you really, really want in life, but you have never asked God for it in prayers? Some of us are going through this pandemic season where there's a lot of tension and panicking and anxiety, but a lot of Christians have not taken their time, even during this crisis time, to ask the Lord specifically for something. What we're going to do today is to learn to pray a kind of prayer that God answers. This passage that we will be looking from the book of Daniel, chapter 9, starting from verse 1, and by the grace of God, next week we will finish it, teaches us how to pray during the times of crisis. Let's dive straight right into it. Here are some steps that you and I can model after the life of Daniel on how to pray a prayer that God can answer. Number one, let God always be the one to first speak to you. 
Allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. This is called the listening step. You listen to the voice of God. Well, how do you do that? Well, you do that by simply allowing God to make the first move. God is always the initiator of everything in your life, and you and I are just the responders. God never expects you to make the first move. He always makes the first move move so that's why it's critical to listen for the instructions by him speaking first before you can move the bible says that god first loved us before we can even comprehend what it means to love him god loved you a whole long time before you even loved him God will never ask you and I to do anything that he has not done for you. The reason why we pray, the reason why we talk to God is because for God first spoke to us in his word in the Bible. The Bible makes it very clear that it's actually listening to God. Prayer is actually listening to God, not talking. How do you listen to God? Well, you listen to God by reading the word of God. You listen to God. We live in a day and age where even if you do not know how to read, but you can understand the words that comes out of human beings' lips, then someone can read the words for you. You can find the scriptures in iPods and other types of electronics that we are privileged to have in our world today. Logically, you need to let God God teach you how to talk to him, how to pray to him, and what to pray about. Daniel began his ministry when he was very young, somewhere around age 15 or so. But then all, if you go all the way to chapter 9, where our text is taken from today, Daniel was now an old man. And theologians are telling us here he's about 85 years old. That means that he was a seasoned son of God. He has acquired a lot of experiences within this time of his life. The interesting thing about Daniel was that Daniel was taken out of his home, out of Jerusalem, and he was a, a, a war prisoner that was captured. And Daniel Miraculously, understanding the word of God, he served under three different kings. He survived all those administrations, but not only did he survive them, that no matter what happened, Daniel was able to excel. Daniel was able to be promoted, and Daniel was able to hold a key position as a child of God. If you look at chapter 9, starting in verse 1 and 2, before we go any further, Father, it was the first year of the reign of Darius, the maid, who was made king of the Babylonians by Cyrus, who was the per who was a Persian. Babylon, I believe, is uh, our current day Iraq, and Persia is our current day Iran. The Bible says. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, was studying the scripture. I learned from the word of the Lord, as recorded by Jeremiah, the prophet, that Jerusalem must lay desolate for 70 years. The interesting thing, as I was preparing for this message, is that Jeremiah and Daniel were not from different eras. They were actually growing up together at about the same time. Jerusalem was destroyed in a war, and Daniel was taken as a war prisoner. But Jeremiah was left behind in this torn city. And Jeremiah wrote, and he says that the city will be, they, they will not be able to rebuild the city for another 70 years before those that were taken into captivity will be able to come back home. 
here's what I'm trying to drive. You will never be able, as a child of God during this crisis, be able to pray effectively until you are able to study the word and learn from the word of God. The secret of listening to God, the secret of understanding your role during this time of a pandemic is reading the word of God on daily basis. The Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus said, If you will stay connected to me and my words remain in your heart, you may ask any request you want in prayer, and it will be given to you. Brothers and sisters, that's a blank check. You can put whatever you put, Whatever it is, imagine someone walking up to you and giving you a check. You said, are you in need? And he says, yes. And he says, here is a check. You could put whatever amount you want to put in it. And you said, excuse me? And he said, yes, you heard me. You can put whatever amount you want to put in it. You can ask whatever you want in prayer and it will be given to you. God is saying, if you stay connected to me, if you stay in harmony with me, any request that you have will be granted. If you are praying, then you better pray a prayer that God can answer. You better pray a specific prayer and you better pray recognizing that you are in harmony with the word of God. If you pray prayers and results are not coming off your prayers, then it's time for you to press a pause and have a self-examination in your heart to see where is it that you have missed the step. Because if you are in harmony with God as a child of God he will answer every request that you made but the key is you must stay in in connection with him and you must be in a fellowship with him you cannot have a broken fellowship you you may probably have been praying for years and it may seem as if things are not happening the thing is this god does not operate on your own timing god operates in his time in his time not in our time daniel is saying I am going to study the word. I am going to have it in me. The more you fill your mind with the Bible, the more you will have answers to the questions of life. Daniel had a conversation with God and he came clearly. It has been recorded for about 70 years. This man meditated on the word of God at least three times daily. In the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. Can you imagine that you will take five minutes of your day in the morning and you spend it with God and you intentionally take five minutes of your afternoon and you intentionally spend it with God and you take five minutes at the end of the day right before you go to sleep and you intentionally spend time with God. It will do miracles in your life. There is no way you could spend this time with the Lord and you are in harmony with God. And your request will not be answered. I don't know about you, but I desire, even with my shortcomings, to be an obedient child of God. I'm constantly asking God in prayers for wisdom. You know, English is not my first language. And in this community today, I'm constantly asking God for the right words in prayer. Lord, as I walk over to this person, may you anoint my lips and the words that come out of me so that it will have a full representation of who you are. Lord, I pronounce and declare that I am your ambassador and ambassadors of Christ as it's described in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20, that I am your ambassador. So Lord, I just 
just want to represent you. It's not about me. It's about you. Brothers and sisters, my point is this. If you seek God and if you check within your heart, I guarantee you there is no request that you will have before God and it will not be answered. If you will develop a habit of multiple times during the day of having a conversation with the Lord, just like Daniel started teaching us here in Daniel chapter 9, then you will let God handle every stress that will come your way and you will deal with it much better. It will improve every single area of your life. If you commune with God, it will make you a stronger man and a stronger woman. If you are in good relationship and in harmony with God, it makes you more confident as a child of God. If you are in union and communion with God, you will be less fearful. You've got nothing to fear because your dad has got it all figured out and you're well protected under his wing. Daniel and Jeremiah both lived at the same time. You know, humanly speaking, if I was Daniel, you know, getting this message that was written by prophet Jeremiah would probably be a discouraging thing for me. But no, Daniel did not see himself in a very discouraging way. In fact, Daniel saw the words of prophet Jeremiah as words that gave him hope. I was just meditating earlier and I was thinking, man, how could I be given heads up that the result of what I am hoping for will take 70 years? The immediate thought for me would be, man, I'm done. I'm done. I just want to lose it. But no, if you look at Daniel here, when he read the words of Jeremiah, the first thing that Daniel had was hope. When Daniel said, I was studying the scripture, he was studying, this is what he said. Look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, starting from verse 10 and through 12. He said, God said to you, you will be kept in Babylon for 70 years. But then I will keep my gracious promise to bring you back to your home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you, not plans for a disaster, but plans that will give you hope and a future. And in those days, when you prayed, I listened. I know that when you were hearing me read this, especially when we got to verse 11 of this text, if you've been around church, For a length of time, you've known this verse. God says that I have a plan for your life. It's a plan that will help you succeed. It's a plan for not for your defeat. It's a good plan that will give you hope, that will give you future. God says this to you. And when that verse is being read, often the last phrase is what we don't pay attention to. In those days when you pray, that is an important phrase that I want you to listen today. It says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. The Lord is saying, during the time of crisis, when you pray, he will listen. God will listen. God says to you this weekend, I have made you for a purpose. I have a plan for your life. But this plan is not automatic. And you could miss this plan that God has for you. Most people live their lives on earth, missing the purpose of why they were originally created. They are just existing. They have no form or shape of why they are here on earth. Brothers and sisters, We've just celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ last week. The Lord did not die so that the church will die. The the Lord died so that the church, you are the church. I am the church. The Lord died so that the church will be risen. The Lord died so that the church will grow. The Lord died so that the church, you know what? This is actually a good season for us 
to even have Easter and to come back later on after we've had Easter's at home and to come back as a church family and then be filled with joy and fellowship and seeing how much the Lord has done to us. There are two factors that involve in fulfilling God's promises, purposes in your life. God's timing and your prayers. Those are two factors that you have to remember. Those are two factors. Maybe another time I will have explanation. But let me explain what this verse Jeremiah is saying here. God says to this, I've got a plan for your life. I've created you for a purpose. And I have a good plan for your life. But it's on my timing. It's on my timing. God is saying that when the right time comes, he will fulfill his plan. You may be waiting on the Lord, but it is on his plan, on his timing, not yours. You are all going to go back home. But in the meantime, in the meantime, you will have to pray. You will have to pray. God says, as you pray, I will listen. You cannot earnestly pray, pray to the Lord and your prayers will not be answered. You cannot earnestly, earnestly seek the Lord from the depth of your heart. Our God is a sovereign God. He is in control and he is a responsible God. God determines the timing of his plan for your life and for my life. Your part is to ask in prayer. Look at what the Bible says. A few promises here in James chapter 4 verse 2. You do not have what you need because you did not ask for it. You do not have because you did not ask for it. I began by asking you, a lot of people even during this crisis have not really, really truthfully articulate what they are trying to ask God for. Some things are not happening in your life because you have not honestly taken the time earnestly to ask the Lord for it. It says you have never asked God to do them, so you will not receive them. When you ask and you are in harmony with God, the Lord will bless you from this earth all the way into eternity. It doesn't say anywhere that God will only bless you in heaven. No, God can bless you. God wants to bless you from this earth all the way into eternity. Whenever you ask, what is it that you desire? When you ask, it shall happen to you according to your faith. On God's timing, all you need to do is to pray. Be in harmony and wait patiently. Secondly, Focus your attention on the Lord. Verse 3, the first part of it. Daniel said, so I turned my face to the Lord, seeking him. You know, I've been privileged to be a father. The best part of my children, when I sit, I have little video clips of my children. I love those days where I was doing a selfie, when they were trying to talk to me. And when they are talking to me, and my head is somewhere, and then they grab my face, and they say, Daddy, look at me. Look at me. What is it that they're asking? Look at what Daniel is saying here. So I turned my face to the Lord, seeking him. It is important that you and I turn our faces to the Lord. You know, usually when I want to talk to the Lord, in my quiet time, I usually talk to the Lord in this direction because he is above there in heaven. And so I usually don't talk to the Lord during my quiet time with my eyes closed. I usually talk to the Lord with my eyes wide open. If I'm out, usually in the mountains praying, I'm actually looking at the sky, looking for a sign and looking onto the Lord. And I'm looking at that focusing on the Lord. Daniel gave the Lord an undivided attention. When a child of God totally focuses on the Lord, they glow. They glow in their attention. Turning your face shows an attention that you are giving unto your Father, which is in heaven. 
One of the greatest gifts that you can give anybody when you talk with them is attention. Is attention. For those of us that are privileged to be married today, you know that when you are talking to your spouse and uh, you are not really giving them your attention, that is going to turn around and bite you. Sometimes you may ask the question, well, how do I look at the Lord? Yes, you can still physically look at the Lord in this direction. You know, there are several scriptures, there are several references in the scriptures that tells us to look up. To look up, it calls your, our attention to look up unto the Lord. So it is okay to go out. It is okay to be in your car as you drive, to look up, to look up unto the Lord. There is no place in the scripture that says you must close your eyes before you can speak to the Lord. There is no place in the scripture that says you must bow your heads. Well, we do that in churches today because we want to hold our attention. And I do that when I lead you just simply because I want to act as an example. But you know, when I'm on my own spending time with the Lord, I don't close my eyes unless there is something else around that could distract me. Then I close my eyes just so that I'm able to stay focused. The New American Standard Version says, So I gave my attention to the Lord to seek Him by prayer. Circle that word, seek. This is the second step of listening. The first step of prayer. The first step is listening. The second step is praying by seeking. Let me quickly also share with you what the word of the Lord says. Some promises. In the book of Amherst, chapter 5, verse 4, God says, seek me and you will live. I repeat, it says, seek me and you will live. In other words, if you are going, if you just don't want to exist, then you must learn as a child of God to seek the Lord. And we have a lot of people in our world today that are not seeking God. Look at Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17. God says, I love those who love me and those who seek me will find me. Those who seek the Lord will find him. When you seek God, you will find him. If you are not finding God, or if you do not understand the purpose of God for your life, then something is wrong. You need to stop and have a self-examination. Search your heart. Jeremiah 29 verse 13, he says, God says, you will find me when you seek me. With all of your heart. Let's go back to, to the basics again. What is the most important thing the Lord says? Seek the Lord with all of your heart. Look at the second part of Hebrews chapter 11, 6b. It says, God rewards those who seek earnestly seek him. You want God to reward your business? Seek him. You want God to reward your finances? Seek him. You want God to reward your marriage? Seek him. You want God to reward your children? Seek him. You want God to reward your relationship? Seek him. You want God to reward your future? Seek him. Whatever you seek God, God is going to reward you in it. And not only that, like I said last week, if you want some shade to Tomorrow, you better plant some seed today. You better plant some seed today so that you will have that tree that will create shade for you. And that shade is not only for your benefit, but it's also for your relatives. It's also for the family of God. So it's not only for your benefit, it is for the benefit of the kingdom of God. God says, look at what the word says again. In Luke 12 verse 31, Jesus says, seek First, the kingdom of God. Before anything else and all things you need will be given to you. Don't seek wealth. Seek God. And then he will take care of your need. Don't seek fame. Seek God. And he will give you what you need. Don't seek pleasure. Seek the kingdom of God. I'm tired of people coming to me in the office and go, well, pastor, well, what happens if, well, if I don't take care of me? Who is going to take care of me? Let me give you some good news here. It's not about you. 
It's not about you. I don't care the treatment that your husband or your wife gives you. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. And the church is not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. It's not about meeting your needs. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. You are just so privileged to be part of it. God will always bless the people that seek him first. Read on your own the book of Hosea chapter, chapter 5, verse starting from verse 15 all the way to chapter 6. America, we are not seeking God, and our world is not seeking God. We don't know how to ask God's permission in anything that we do. That's why we are constantly in trouble, especially in the church. The church doesn't know how to ask for God's wisdom. That's why we are constantly in trouble. We don't know how to ask God's help in our journey with him. We don't even know how to ask for his guidance in the things that we are attempting to do. That's why we are constantly in trouble and in distress. The third and final point for this morning is always express your desire to the Lord with emotions. Whenever you are asking God, when you are asking God in prayer, express your desires with emotions. You know, God created you with emotions for a reason. A lot of people are able to watch movies today and they have emotions. But when it comes to speaking to their father, our father, which is in heaven, we are not able to express our emotions and something is wrong. Don't have your prayer just cut and dry. You know, pray with emotions. Don't pray as if something has died in you pray with emotions when you sit don't just sit and say lord just bless this food and nourish my body no talk with sincerity talk as you will talk to your father who is sitting and listening to you you know pray to god with emotion god doesn't really care how beautiful your prayer sounds god doesn't really care how much words you use what he really cares is the authenticity and the emotions that you put on it. It is the earnesty that you have. Earnestly is how you earnestly seek him. Have you ever learned to say even the right words but with the wrong emotions? That could happen when you talk to the Lord. You have to learn to express the right emotion when you speak to your father. As a husband today, there are a lot of times that I get in trouble. Not only with my spouse, but even with church members. When I express myself with the wrong emotions, it gets me in trouble. God gave us that emotion and we must use that emotion appropriately. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you're talking to someone and they go, Excuse me? What do you mean by that? Well, because your tone, the tone of your voice wasn't just right. God is an emotional God. The only reason why you have emotions is because you and I are created in the image of God. And we must use our emotions appropriately. Human beings have emotions that none other animals have like we do. Our whole being is being created for us to express ourselves. Brothers and sisters, I will take a pause here. And we will continue from here next week. But this crisis time is a time for us to return back to the Lord with hope. With the eyes of the Lord. With our eyes fixed on the Lord. It doesn't matter how long. We, they're just talking about two weeks or probably just ending of the month. You know, Daniel... When he received the words of prophet Jeremiah, he was given and he heard 70 years. He didn't put his head on the ground and he was listening and studying the word with hope. You and I have hope because God has a purpose for us. And even during this quarantine time, he has a reason why he has us there. And there's something that the Lord has for us. You do not waste this time. Do not waste this precious time. And do not take this time for granted. But let it be a time that you and I individually will draw closer to our Father who is in heaven. Amen.
Join me in a moment of prayer as we return back to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, as we close, Lord, I need you. With every fiber of my being, I need you. May your words continue to be a blessing to us. Lift us up. Encourage us during this trying season. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will invite the worship team to come back up and let us uh, sing another worship song together. Hallelujah. I know this season has been extremely difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people are asking the question, Lord, where are you? Where is God in the midst of all this chaos? Someone was saying the other day, how can he be God and be so gone during times of crisis like this? But God is not gone. He is here with us. He is in the heart and minds of each and every one of us that is trusting Him. And each and every one of us that believes in Him, He is with us.
to Jesus I surrender make me Savior holy thine let me feel the Holy Spirit truly know that thou art mine I surrender all I surrender all all to me my blessed Savior I surrender I just want to thank you for this morning thanks for your words of encouragement the Lord even during this crisis a lot of people around have lost their loved ones and it's so difficult it's just so, so difficult to just comprehend but we just pray for your comfort to be with those that have lost their loved ones just pray for the sense of your peace that surpasses the human understanding rest upon us. Lord, we just ask that you will grant us peace. Lord, we pray for those that have lost their jobs, those that are struggling, those that are living in anxiety because of all of this chaos, the economy going down, People are searching for places where they can find comfort. Lord, for our comfort is in you. For you are our peace. Holy Spirit, strengthen us and encourage us. We surrender all to you. We totally surrender all to you, Lord, because there's just nothing that we can do. forgive us Lord where we have wronged you help each and every one of us as we round up our worship this morning Lord, to truly truly give it to you to you be the glory Father that day that we meet with him and depart in no more. Amen.